continue our coverage of Michigan's housing crisis. Joining us now is Kevin Piku, the executive director of the Southwest Detroit Immigrant and Refugee Center. We appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, your organization helps people stay in their homes who are at the risk of losing it. Can you tell us how this works? This is different than what we spoke about in our last segment when we were talking about evictions. Sure. It's a big problem in older cities like Detroit or Pontiac where people have lived in houses maybe for generations, but the person who bought the house whose name is on the title has not made a plan on how to pass it on to other family members. So when that person dies, the person who's left there trying to keep a house up has access to no resources to keep that house in repair. Many times the house has fallen into disrepair. We see them all the time. And it's not because the person didn't want to take care of the house. They simply didn't have access to any resources to keep the houses repaired. So what happens in that situation? So what often happens is the houses are lost to foreclosure or they fall into disrepair and they're just simply abandoned. So many times they're just these houses, generations lose the largest asset in their family because no one is taking care of it. Right. So what is your suggestion to fixing this problem that you do with your work? Sure. So the first thing is if you own a house, you should always have a plan. We always talk about planning ahead. Every homeowner should have a will, and in that will, they should say who that property will belong to in the past. It is not hard to write a will. At our organization, we help people every week prepare wills so that someone has a plan for that family. So there are people out there that cannot afford a lawyer, that right. own a home, that don't have that extra income or put it off. Um, where does your organization come in with that? Sure. So we have locations five days a week. Uh, twice a week we're in southwest Detroit, twice a week we're on the east side of Detroit, one day we're in Pontiac. All you have to do is make an appointment. You want a will, we'll put a will together in less than an hour. And you will have that document, it'll be signed, ready to go, and you have now had a plan for the future of your, probably the most valuable asset in your family. How complicated of a situation is this for someone that does not have a will, does not have an estate or a trust, and falls into this situation where they owned a home, they pass away, and maybe they don't even have anyone to leave it to. Right, and this is really the problem we see all the time, is that someone, the owner of the house has died and someone may live in that house. It may be a family member, it may be someone else. They don't know what to do. And without a plan, without consulting with a lawyer, and finding out, going through the probate process where a judge, and we have partners in Oakland County Probate and in Wayne County Probate, where a judge will decide who should own that house, you have to go through the process or that, that house will fall off the radar, fall into disrepair and could be abandoned. Sure. You need to see a lawyer. Sure, and so let's take the argument of we don't have a lawyer. Sure. What are you seeing right now in the communities in Detroit? What are you seeing for people that are going through this? Well, fortunately, there is a plan afoot. Uh, shout out to uh, Scott Benson, who is the council member in District 3 who has made it one of his priorities to take care of title, uh, tangled titles. We are working closely with his staff to go out and have meetings uh, and inform the, the public what they can do if they're in that situation. And we are meeting with people right now. Mayor Duggan has also made it a priority. Generational wealth, keeping houses and families is his priority. So resources are coming on. You just have to look for them. Are you seeing an uptick as far as this issue? going on, um, you know, a lot of what has been made since the pandemic with evictions yes. and issues of that nature um, and the trickle down effect. Are you seeing an increase over the last few years since 2020? Oh, absolutely. I think with the pandemic, many people stayed at home. Many people failed to make plans they should have made and they didn't go out. They didn't go see a lawyer. They didn't go to an organization like ours and take care of these issues. A lot of things were pushed to the future. And unfortunately, when a loved one or the house owner dies, it's often difficult to make a plan once the person is already gone. And that leads me to my next question is, let's say that has happened and, and somebody did pass away. There was not a will, there sure. was not an estate or a trust. Is it possible to recover your losses or recover your asset after the fact? Absolutely. But again, it takes time. And that's where organizations like ours that has some practice Working with families, sometimes it's a little bit of family therapy we have to do because oftentimes there may be many potential heirs, all of whom have to be notified, all of whom have to be on the same page. And unfortunately, sometimes getting all these family members or potential interest holders together in one place and to agree on a plan for that house can be difficult. 
That's why you need people like our organization that is skilled, have done this before. Uh, we can work the families in those situations, it but does it's seem difficult. It, it, it does, and it does seem a complicated issue where things could fall through the cracks, where even if it's a young person thinking, right. okay, well, nothing's going to happen to me, I'm right. young, and all of a sudden you're in, or your family's in a situation where the owner of the home is no longer with us. Right. It's a real problem. I mean, it's the old adage, you need to plan for the future. And those who have the desire to leave to their for are those who come after them. You don't do your family any favors by not making a plan, particularly when you're sitting on an asset that is the key to maybe future generations staying in the middle class, having resources for their future. You need to make a plan. It is not that hard to do, and we are willing to work with any family that wants to do that. You mentioned that there have been conversations with the mayor, Mike yes. Duggan. And so how have those gone? And what is the... Um, what do you think the tactic from the city is and their stance on what they're trying to do for people that fall into this category? Sure. Well, it's a real win for any city because if you keep people in the homes, if you keep that property up so that the property taxes can be paid, so that people will live in those houses, pay their income tax, I mean, that's a real win for the city. So the city has, has targeted this particular area as something that they want to emphasize. And beginning on October 1, I, again, I don't want to be premature in announcing something for the city of Detroit, but this is a program that at least in District 3 and then citywide is going to become a major, major emphasis for the city of Detroit. All right, well, stay with us as we continue this conversation after the break on CBS News Detroit at 7. You're watching CBS News Detroit. Welcome back. At this hour, we have been talking about different parts of the housing crisis in Michigan. Kevin Piku from the Southwest Detroit Immigrant and Refugee Center is still with us tonight. Before the break, you were telling us about the work your organization does where the title for the home does not have a clear line of ownership. What happens in that moment? What happens to those homes, to those families, to those people? Um, how do we again assure that this does not happen? Well, again, the best way to do it is to have a plan. And if you are a homeowner, to make sure you have a will and you have specifically stated in that will who you want to own your home when you pass. Sometimes these are hard conversations, but we don't do our children, our grandchildren, our heirs any favors by not doing this plan. Specifically, your organization, walk us through exactly what you do here. Sure. So when a person comes in, they may be living in a house that they don't own. The first question we have, and someone has died in their family, we ask them, well, number one, do you have a will? First question. Oftentimes, they do not. Then the second question is, who did that person leave behind? Who are their heirs? A spouse? Do they have children? Who do they have in their family that could potentially be an owner of that house? Then we have to figure out how to contact all these people, and then we come up with a plan that we could present to a probate judge. And that judge will decide, it might be in Oakland County, it might be in Wayne County, it could be in Macomb County. That judge will decide based on who came forward, who that home will, who, who will own that home. You know, we, we've seen in the news the last few months what happened with Aretha Franklin's estate. Absolutely. And is that, in a sense, a prime example of what you do not want to face, what you do not want to go through? I mean, that played out, obviously, in court with her children and things like that, and it's a potentially difficult situation with family members and, and loved ones. That's right, and that's a real cautionary tale. We talk about it at our organization all the time. If a person comes to us and asks for a will, we make sure that will is properly signed, notarized, dated, and stamped, so there's no question when it was signed, and that last will, that is the one that the judge will look at. So again, the Aretha Franklin story is a good one when you don't do the plan correctly. That's why it's important to talk to a professional, someone who has done this before. And the only place I know where you can get this work done for free is at the Southwest Detroit Immigrant and Refugee Center or at the Eastside Legal Project or our office in Pontiac. So how do we get in touch with you? Let, let's say we cannot afford a lawyer. Sure. We cannot afford to pay someone to write us up a will. We don't know much about it. We don't have enough information. How do we get in contact with you and your organization to be able to help? Sure. So we have a web page. If you go to www.detimmigrantcenter.com or Google Southwest Detroit Immigrant and Refugee Center, on the front page, it'll show you how to contact us. Leave us a message. You can call our call center, and uh, we can set you up with an appointment. How difficult is the process? How tedious is it to oh. go through this? I mean, it sounds simple, right? It, but I'm sure it's not. I wish it were simple. 
Some cases are simple. If it's a small family and we know clearly who the parent or the grandparent wanted the house to go to, that's fairly easy. What's difficult is sometimes finding out all the potential heirs, finding out all the children, the grandchildren, and others who could be heirs, and contacting them and letting them know that this house is in play, and getting them all to agree. That can be difficult. That can be time consuming. But once we have all that information, we can go through the whole process in six months or less. Well, we've seen the issues through the pandemic since 2020. We're probably dealing with a lot more of this than we did prior. Right. Um, so how complicated have some of these cases gotten and what you have seen where people come in after the fact right. going, hey, this house was demolished. It should be our home. And what happens then? Right. So that is really tricky because oftentimes people come to us when it's too late. The house has already been repossessed. The house has already been taken over by the city. And at that point, if the title has transferred, to try to get that title back is near to impossible. We want to work with people who we can still help. And that is, if that house is still standing, if the title is clearly in someone's name, uh, we can work with that family. What's worst case scenario here? And if you're in that situation, what do you do? So worst case scenario might be the, the, the property has already been foreclosed or it's already been turned over to the land bank. If, if we're past that, there's very, very little we can do to get it back. Really? Yeah. Really? And even though it was in the family's name? By that time, it only gets there if it had been so neglected or if no taxes had been paid for enough time and the redemption period has passed. There's very little that we can do. I'm sure there are some things we can do, but it's a lot of work for, for very little payback. Best time to do this is after someone has passed away, the taxes are paid or nearly paid up. That is the easiest family we can help. Are you seeing a lot of these issues in the city of Detroit? And I don't know how much you study other cities and sure. other large, older cities, but are you seeing anything different here in Detroit compared to some other cities? Well, one thing in Detroit, it is definitely a situation where uh, middle class uh, and lower income African American families are the most directly impacted. Why do you think that is? Well, many times, many African American families have not uh, they don't have a lawyer that they've worked with on this matter, and so they don't have a plan in place. We also know that, especially in the pandemic, the death rates among elderly, particularly African-American and Hispanic persons, was really high. So many families were caught off guard, and maybe they wanted to make a plan, but the loved one died before they could get one in place. So I see that very much in the city of Detroit, often among uh, black and brown communities. But are you seeing it more in Detroit compared to other cities? Have you done any studies or have you looked at that, what's going on, let's say, in Los Angeles, Chicago, sure. New York, Philadelphia, Washington? So uh, the city of Detroit has done a lot of work on this, and they have compared Detroit to some other cities. Uh, and again, I don't have this data in front of me, but I know in Philadelphia and in Jacksonville, Florida, those cities have taken this, this problem head on and have poured resources into getting titles transferred. And you mentioned Mayor Mike Duggan yes. is working, and you've had dialogue with that the office. mayor's office yes. to work on this issue to make sure this doesn't happen to Detroiters. Yes, so this is definitely on the city's radar, and they're looking at other cities that have tackled this issue. And that's why I can say, I hope, by October 1st, we'll be able to launch this program in the city of Detroit. So keep your eyes and ears open, more to follow. Well, we appreciate your time. Kevin Piku, Executive Director of the Southwest Detroit Immigrant and Refugee Center, thank you so much for setting thank light you. on this topic and giving some people that may need to fill out a will and get it notarized That's and go right. through that whole process can do so. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.